Let's make this turret in Blender and Unity. I quickly modeled this turret in Blender. Feel free to skip the time lapse using the timestamps. The biggest thing that you should note here is that the gun mount part of the model is separate to the base. The reason for this is that we want to rotate the gun mount piece in Unity. I made use of Mfenzia's color palette texture, so thanks to him for making it. Also, you can find this project free to download on itch, the link is in the description. Once the modeling is done, we'll bring the model and texture into Unity. I'll bring in two characters for us to shoot at. I use these in the game I'm writing, they come in waves. Please check it out and do the wishlisting. These will be replaced by normal capsules in the itch version, but if you like them, you can find affiliate links in the description. I'll create a quick script for managing the health of our targets. This will have a float value property that determines the health of the character and a method for receiving damage. The method will take in a damage amount and when called, it will deduct the damage amount from the current health. If the health is zero or less, we'll deactivate the game object. Back in the scene view, I'll just make sure the character objects have capsule colliders so that our shoot functionality works later on and I'll add the health component we just created. Now for the fun part. I'll create a script to manage the turret, I'll call it turret controller. We're going to need a couple of fields here. We'll need a few floats to manage the rate of fire, the amount of damage, the rotation speed and the shooting distance. Then we'll need to get a reference to the pivoting part of the turret, which is the part that we will rotate. We'll need a reference to a point from where the turret will shoot and a reference to a particle system to help visualize the shooting. Finally, we'll need a reference to the list of targets that we'll be shooting at. Depending on the type of game you're making, the way you get the targets to shoot at will be different. I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible for this example. Next, we'll need a float to tell us how much time is remaining before we can shoot and a reference to the current target that we are shooting at. In the start method, we'll set the time till the next shot to the fire rate and we'll handle its logic in the update method. We're going to need three additional methods. Firstly, we'll create a method called getNextTarget. This method will check if our current target list has any elements and if it does, it will return the first element in the list and then remove it from the list. If there is nothing left in the list, we can just return null. Secondly, we'll create a method called look at target. This method will check if the current active target is null or disabled. If it is, we will call our get next target method. If the active target is still null at this point, we can assume there are no more targets and just return null. If not, we can find the direction to our next target by subtracting its position from the position of our pivot object. Then we can get the look rotation using quaternion.lookrotation. We can get a smooth rotation value by using the quaternion.slurp function. We'll lerp from our current rotation to the look rotation and apply our speed multiplied by delta time as the interpolation value. Finally, we'll update the rotation, but because we only want to update the rotation on the y axis, we'll multiply the target rotation by the up vector of the pivot object using the vector3.scale method. And the last method we'll need is the shoot method. In this method, we'll play our particle effect. Then we'll create a ray from our fire point's position in the forward direction. Then we can cast the ray using physics.raycast. We'll pass in the ray we created and create an out parameter which will store any hit information that the ray cast records. And we'll pass in the max shoot distance to limit the distance of the ray. If the ray hits, we'll get the health component from the game object we hit. We'll throw a warning if the health object is null because this shouldn't be possible. Then we can call the health receive damage method with the damage amount passed in as a parameter to deal damage to the target. With all three of our new methods done, we'll work on our update method. Firstly, we'll call the look at target method to get the next available target. Then we can check if our time till next shot is less than or equal to zero. If it is, we'll reset the shot timer and if we have a valid target, we'll call the shoot method. If our time till next shot is greater than zero, we'll just deduct the delta time from it and that is that for our code. Now in the scene view, we'll create a game object as a child of the pivot 
pivot object, which will represent the fire point. We'll move the fire point to the tip of the barrel of the turret. Next, we'll create a particle effect as a child of the fire point. This particle effect is very simple. It just spawns the default particle with a burst of a single particle. I set the color to orange and made it reduce in size over time. Now we can just drag in our pivot transform, our fire point transform, and our shoot particle effect. We'll also assign our target object, and that is that. Now when we hit the play button, the turret targets an object and shoots at it till it dies. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.